Oh no, I have to start with the formal intro. Hello, and welcome to my first ever processing tutorial because a ton of people have been asking me to make one. <laughs> you gotta and, make it. Yeah, and here's my brother for nozzle. Go subscribe. Please subscribe. If our subscriber counts Indeed. differ by any amount, N, that N is how many people will be murdered tomorrow, right? So it better be zero, okay? Save lives. Gotta Save the planet. So I was thinking, what should I program since there's a lot of stuff I've put out there? Well, I thought I'd start with the thing that I'm best known for, which is Scale of the Universe, which compares the sizes of- The music played too loud here, but Michael used the magic of plugins to remove it. Oh, also epilepsy warning, this video contains some flashing images. Scale of the Universe, which compares the sizes of many objects across the universe to scale. <laughs> From atoms to galaxies and everything in between. Oh wait, hold on, Michael, look at this, Russell's teapot. Teapot technology has changed a lot in the past few years. Yeah. Anyway, we'll start the universe and work our way down like this, just to show you the scope of this project that we're going to embark on today. Um, a lot of things. Yes, there are. Then the smallest is the plank length. I made it back when it looked like this and sounded like this. Pencil! You're here! Now let's go super fast! Have you ever been there? Where? Angel Falls. Oh, I have not been to Angel Falls. It's in Venezuela. And I've never been to South America at all. Go meet up. <laughs> we'll do a meet up there. This is the most commented on object Minecraft world. Anyway, let's get started with processing. By the way, the original was made with Flash, but Flash is quickly going out of date. So that's why we're using processing instead, which is like a simplified version of Java. And Java is pretty cool. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to assume you know a little bit about programming already, so I'm not going to be explaining basics like what variables are. This might make those of you who are complete beginners to programming feel like you're left out. You might think, oh, this is the advanced programmers helping out the intermediate programmers and leaving me behind. But actually, I'm going to show you everything I'm doing from start to finish. I'm going to try to keep this as unedited as possible, so you see every single thing I'm typing, every single button I'm clicking. So, even if you don't understand what I'm doing, you can just follow along, and you'll get the same result as me. Oh cool, I can follow along too. You could, right, but you don't have a computer with you right now. Okay, so like I said, we're doing processing. I already have processing on my computer, but I'm using 2.0 since I downloaded it a while ago. <laughs> But I want this one to be relevant to the modern time, so I'm going to download Processing 3. If you don't have it, you can do the, exactly the same thing and it'll be all on the same boat. Okay, so processing.org, right here. Click download in the upper left corner. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You choose your operating system. So for us, that's Windows 64, bit. And now it's downloading. Yeah, yeah. I it's... thought it was a one and a three. No. I think it's incorporating the it's P, a, P. a P and a three. Pretty clever, but that means you're gonna have to change it when the fourth version comes out. There was something about giving a donation, and I was gonna say something like, Oh, processing has helped me out so much in the last six years, it's about time I finally donate something once and for all. But I guess we're not gonna do that. Please give us the opposite of a donation. If you go to Patreon, you can actually go below zero. So like, if you decide you don't like the video, you can like, change your, yeah, your pledge to be negative. Okay, so now we have the zip file, so I will click on it, and... Uh-oh, I don't like that. Let's just open it in, Win in File Explorer, download. This is the zip file, let's just extract it. Wait, this is what I do, I just open it with Windows Explorer and then I just copy the file. <laughs> I don't know if that's the normal way. I'm pasting the processing folder, which contains like the .exe and everything else into my documents. Uh, go, go, oh, wait, go, did you see? Go, 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 go. <laughs> it went down to zero. <laughs> Which you need is, a little encouragement, you know? Yeah. Like now it's back up. Well, it's going faster and faster. Um, also, I think it's cool that the version we're downloading is 3.3.3. .3. So of all times to start this project, you know, we've got the lucky number on our side. Do you think I should close the original scale of the universe? Music scale. What? I'm what? on the camera! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The red this is dot. What I've dreamed of. The red dot is, means it's recording. Two days ago, I was playing this card game with a bunch of other people, and it's kind of like mafia, where out of a group of ten people, three of them are bad guys, and they try to hide among the crowd. They handed out cards, and whoever got a black suit was 
bad, and whoever got a red suit is good. Oh, it's done copying, but I gotta finish my story. Um, it makes sense because black is a darker color, but it's interesting because in the stock market, or I guess in business, when you say you're in the red, that means you lost money, bad, and black means that you've gained money, good. So it's exactly flipped. Okay, so this is inside the processing 3.3.3 folder. Processing.exe will run the program processing. So double click, click run. Yeah, but I trust it. I trust maybe it. Maybe you made a big mistake. If we made a big mistake, then thousands of other people will make the same mistake, so we won't be alone. Hooray! Yay! Okay, so this is the UI that I am very used to. Don't know the full memes, crazy frog. Oh, Axel F. Michael, this isn't a video to express your personality, it's a video to teach people how to program. Like, I'm expecting, you know, like 30 year olds who want to learn how to program to watch it, and they're gonna be shown this. <laughs> you screeching, well, not screeching, but singing badly. So, I'm just gonna like dive into it, okay? I'm gonna start programming Scale of the Universe. Here I go. So, in processing, there's two big functions that have very important roles. There's setup. It's like us. We like this. Oh, we do. There's setup and draw. When the program runs, setup is run once at the beginning to set up all of the important variables and functions and whatever. And then draw is run once every single frame, over and over again, for as long as the program runs. That's the flash of the cool one. Yeah, the cool one. Everybody sees. Meanwhile, setup's in the background. Michael. Most important one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing would happen without setup, but it's yeah. the one that's the most important. Mm -hmm. That's true, setup is most important. Now we've put a lot of progress into this project, it's time to save. Mm -hmm. Control S. Okay, if you don't know how to save your files, then you might be a little behind. So here's my processing folder, I'll save it as Scale of the Universe Tutorial. How did you get that name? It's a tutorial of Scale of the Universe. Oh! And what's interesting about processing files is they're actually folders that contain both the actual code itself, which is a .pde file, and any data assets you need to run the program, including like images, text files, font files, and it's all just within this folder. It's like a self-contained org. Yeah, self-contained org. All together. An SCO. I love SCO. Yeah, SCOs are the best. Let's just get started. <laughs> this is like the fifth time I said let's just get started. But when it comes to drawing the scale of the universe, the first thing we need to know are the dimensions of the window. So I'll say final int because it's an integer that's not going to change. Actually, I'm going to do float just because everything within the Cartesian grid of drawing graphics is a floating point. So this is just going to help keep things consistent. The window width, I'll just set it to 1280 because I like that number. And the window height, well, I want everything to be a 16 by 9 aspect ratio because that seems to be universal. So 1280 by 720 will get us there. So here we've just declared two variables, but they're not actually being used for anything. So if we want to actually set what the size of the window will be, we just say size, and then in parentheses we do width, comma, height. Unfortunately, processing is really dumb because if you put these numbers into here, I think it will cause an error. Yeah, for some reason, the one part of processing where you actually have to type in raw numbers instead of variables is in the size function. Oh, okay. so it's like pre-processing is. Like yeah, pre-processing. Usually, you don't want to copy numbers like this. Like, you usually don't want to have arbitrary numbers appear in two spots, because if you want to change one, you have to change it multiple times. But here we have no choice. I have an idea. Let's see if this makes our faces look better. Oh, that the light switch has to be on. Servant, go, turn it on. Good job, slave. Good? Actually, no, this is nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's too dark beforehand. We can um, fire our hearts with that. We're in this with extreme precision. Power. Yes, extreme. That's the name of the dancing group at Stanford. Um, shout out to the extreme crew. Right? Should we list names? No, that would be doxing people. Not doxing, but invading their privacy. Cool, cool. Um, so if you click around, you have this completely empty window that is 1,280 pixels across and 720 pixels down. And just to prove to you that these numbers are exactly what's changing that port, if I change it to 200, the window will now have a height of 200 pixels. Hey, that's the resolution of my phone. It is. We're going at a very slow pace. We're never going to finish at this rate. So Let's play the video four times. 
No, that's not good. Oh, I actually was talking to uh, some classmates at Stanford about this. Um, you can play back recorded lecture videos at one times speed, one point five times speed, two times speed. You know, if you're short on time, right? But it usually makes it so that the speech is too fast to understand. What it really should do is have a program that can listen to when the professor is speaking, play that at one times speed. But then, if the professor is not speaking, like he's just walking around or like writing something on the board, it plays at ten times speed. I have it the other way around. Michael, I thought you'd like my idea because, like, I, I was actually talking about how useful it was to them, and they were like, "Whoa!" Um, the inverse is the way to go. <laughs> that would just be like, <laughs> and then lots of silence. Let me take a drink of my water. <laughs> <laughs> Again, people are not going to land on the program very well from this. They've learned a lot already. They have. Like, five lines of code. Next, um, I will have a single margin variable that will describe the width of the margin on the top, left and right, sides, and bottom, as well as the margin between the slidey bar and the actual window port. I'm going to make that all one variable just to keep things simple. You might not want a margin at all. I mean, like, the smartphone craze right now is to have, like, bezel-less screens. I'll make the margin, uh, 10. And then my last variable will be the width of the slider bar, which I'll call slider height. Let's make that 50. I can change that whenever I want. I want the UI to be drawn every single frame because we're just going to be updating everything every single frame. So let's make the background Let's make it white for now. So, if you do RGB, um, white is 255, 255, 255. Yeah, so there we go, that works. But, like I mentioned before, draw is running every single frame. To, so just to prove to you that it is changing, if I set the, the red value to a random value from 0 to 255, it's going to flash shades of cyan. Yeah, <laughs> like this. Oh, I should add, add an epilepsy warning. Oh, I forgot to set the frame rate. Let's just set that to 60, because that's a pretty standard frame rate. Yeah, good. But we don't want it flashing, so we'll set it back to white. Next, let's draw in the borders, which are 10 pixels. But we won't think of it as 10 pixels wide. We'll think of it as margin pixels wide. Oh, actually, what am I th thinking? These should be final variables. The color of the background. We'll call that background color equals, in processing you can set colors by saying color, parenthesis, and then the three RGB values inside. Um, just to prove that it's working, let's go with a magenta background and a cyan border. Um, because we're living in like the 1990s when the internet is colorful. It's really helpful to have those variable names, because if you ever want to change it, not that you'd ever want to change the color from cyan or magenta, but if you decide that you change your mind and you have the same colors used everywhere throughout your code, it's really easy to change it just, like, just by changing that one line. Yeah, I'm also going to make the frame rate a variable. Oh, I hope this isn't also another one of those things that needs to be set beforehand. It doesn't. Yay. Okay, so this is the magenta, this is the cyan. I'll use background color just like that. Bam. Now I have a magenta background. And now it's time to draw our borders in. So to draw a rectangle of a certain color, we'll first change our fill color to that border color that we want to use. Uh, we don't want outlines, but the thing is, I don't think we ever want outlines. So right from the get-go, at the start, we'll say no strokes. Just like a person with a deformed brain, no strokes. We're we do, a good road. We do not want strokes here. It's okay. So now our fill color is set to what we want. Now we'll just type rect. And then in rect, all you have to type is x, y, width, height. So what do we want our first x and y to be? Well, if you think about the border, I'll start with the left side. The upper left corner is 0, 0. So that's all we need to type in. The width is the margin, and the height is the height of the whole screen, which is window height. And with that, now the left side should have a cyan border. Mmm, delicious. Do you see that? I'll make it a bit wider. There we go. Wider, there we go. Now let's do the one on the right. It's exactly the same, but the X coordinate has shifted all the way to the other side. So it's the window width minus the width of the margin itself, since rectangles are like based on the left, upper left side. So it's window width minus margin. 
There. Okay, now we'll go a bit faster for the top and bottom. Um, zero, zero again, because it starts in the upper left. This time the width is window width, and the height is margin. There's the top. Okay, <laughs> at this point it's not that surprising. I don't expect your jaws to be dropping just yet. My the... jaw is dropping. Is... That's because you're is... dumb. We're adults now, we shouldn't be acting like this. Oh, I, I did something wrong. When you see something wrong, the correct strategy is to cry, give up, and never come back to your project. But actually, what you should be doing is thinking, hmm, what am I doing wrong? What I should change is the Y coordinate this time. I'm moving that really long horizontal bar way down to the bottom. So it's instead of having a Y coordinate of zero, it's window height minus margin. Okay. There we go. Now it's on the bottom. Um, there's one more margin bar, and that's the one between the slidey bar and the main window. So that's exactly the same, except we're going to subtract the margin a second time, because there's two margins there, and the width of the slider bar, which is slider height. And now we'll have a working scale the universe box. And as expected, the width of all the cyan margins is 30, which is the variable, and the width of this pink bar at the bottom is 50, which is slider height. So we're off to a good start. But are we? Find out in part two. To clarify, I will put all the source files on GitHub once the final part is uploaded, so you don't have to manually type everything I'm typing. Anyway, what did you think about this video? Too fast or too slow? Or were there too many diversions? Let me know so I can make part 2 better. Oh wait, I've already recorded part 2. Well, for future videos, I guess. Oh, and I have a Patreon, and my current patrons get to have their names read aloud by three very special people. Benjamin Gordon. Trevor, David Faller, Dunkel Blau, Brady Wagner, Mike House. 2 plus reward description Carey will say your name in every video you support. Michael K. Tantuzar, Bruno Arthur Sescaneto, Jeremy Neander, Stephen Kingsbury, Deathfighter, Crimperio, Jeremy Hay, Troy Burgardo, Simon Law, Will Frederick, one plus reward description computery will say your name in every video you support. Jeddah Diocorda. Samuel Itterbrink. Colton Hackstadt. Hunter Smith. Nicholas. Brad Roberts. Themat Miser. William Mulback. Adam Bignold. Seria Tone and Jude. Daniel Nessesel. Matt 2095. Niaz Faridani Rad. Blast Cage. Juan Arbia. Noah Van Der Voort, John M. Zash, Mason Kemp, Black Wolf Games, Mike, Jacob Johansson, Julian DGTV, Tomaru, Len Barkey, Satomi Hanasu, Will Frederick, Simon Law, Troy Burgado, Jeremy Hay, Crimp IO, Deathfighter, Stephen Kingsbury, Jeremy Neander, Bruno Arthur, Sesco Neto, Tantasar, Michael K, Mike Koss, Brady Wagner, Dunkelblau, David Fowler, Trevor, Benjamin Gordon, Benjamin Gordon, Trevor, David Fowler, Dunkelblau, Brady Wagner, and Mike Koss. Jealous of these cool kid clubs? Or do you just want to help me out creating new videos? Then maybe you could support me on Patreon and hear your name read aloud as lusciously as those that came before you. Also, I should point out that the webcam we used to record this video was made in 2007, so it's literally a decade old. Maybe it's time for an upgrade. Well, thanks for watching everybody, and see you in the next segment of this show.